Even though I'm about to, what was her saying? I, oh, even though I'm about to Tell say Tell him how what, much what, I like him. No, no, you already oh, did that. Oh, I already did that, right. Okay, even though he's about, he's to, about to say he, what he's he about, to He's about to say right. the worst thing you can the say to a girl. The worst thing you could say to a girl. I deeply and completely accept myself. Deeply and completely accept myself. And I accept him. And I accept him. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let that. I'm at least willing to understand. I am willing to understand. Yeah. Okay. What he said. What he said. F four heart pound. Four heart pounding. 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 Okay, that's better. Uh, is it a zero or? Well, I think it's a little up because I know what he's going to say. <laughs> okay, even though I know what he's going to say. Even I know what he's going to say. <laughs> that's the and nice I, thing about these movies. You know yeah. what's going to happen. <laughs> right? <laughs> even though I know what he's going to say. <laughs> I know what he's going to say. And I've heard it before. And I've heard it before. I'm about to hear it again. And I'm about to hear it again. I deeply, completely accept I myself. I completely accept myself. I am a prisoner. I am a prisoner. To a 16-year-old boy's words. To a 16-year-old oh. boy's words. Wow. At this age, at, at this, this age, age, I wouldn't take a 16-year-old boy's advice on or words on anything. At this age, I wouldn't take a 16-year-old words on or advice on anything oh, unless I was desperate unless I was desperate <laughs> no but that's so deep. I'm sorry I had to do it that's brilliant that's brilliant <laughs> oh. To tell the truth, even getting ready to come here, I was back and forth between excitement and like, oh my God, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I really felt the intensity of just the vulnerability of when you do this, you're out there, somebody's not going to like it, you know, perhaps, well, that's uh, absolutely et cetera, true. et cetera, et cetera. what you do, somebody's, somebody's not going like to like it. I don't right. care who you are, somebody's not going to like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And how, I have to be okay with that. How are you going to thousands and thousands of right. writings on people's walls? You're not right. going to do it. Right. There's no entertainer in history has done that. There's right. no president that's ever done that. This is true. Yes. Even though no president has done it. Even though no president has I done it. I think I can. I think I can. Or I think I should. <laughs> I think I should. <laughs> I, should be able to, I should be able to be perfect for everybody. I should be able to be perfect for everybody. For everybody. For everybody. Perfection for everybody. Perfection for everybody. Uh, call me president. Call me president. <laughs> <Duh. go. laughs> I want to be popular. I want to be popular. At any cost. At any cost. Even though I'd like to be able to please everybody in the world. <laughs> Even though I'd like to be able to please everybody in the world. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. I can't myself. name a single person. I can't name a single person. Who pleases everybody in the who world. Who pleases everyone. <laughs> can't name a single person. 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 Not one person. Not one person. Anywhere. Anywhere. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I can't name anybody. I, as a matter of fact, I can't name anybody um, that hasn't pissed off a whole bunch of people. That hasn't pissed off a whole bunch of people, <laughs> <laughs> including myself, including myself, and everybody in this room, <laughs> everybody in this room, and everybody who says you should be perfect, everybody who says you should be perfect. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's uh, good. That's good. Well. That's a little reframe there, my dear. <laughs> for the next few minutes, I'm setting the stage uh, for Pamela's hepatitis C by introducing a non-medical approach. And of course, that's what we do here. We, we look at the emotional contributors to disease rather than the medical approach. You know? So, so I want to I bring that up to her in a way which is understandable. And in a way, what I'm doing is called reframing. And that's a very important topic you'll learn in this tutorial. And reframing, which is having somebody look at something through a different set of glasses, um, is much more effective while we're stimulating the meridian system, that is, while we are tapping, than it is when you just do it conversationally. Well, you know, one of the things, when I told you I talked to this other doctor, mm -hmm. Janet Boyles, Janet Boyles, MD. She was at our Dallas workshop, you know. So I asked her, I says, I, says, I says, what's hepatitis C? I don't even know what it is. Okay. She says, oh, well, this is this virus, da 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 And I says, well, what causes it? She says, oh, it could be anything. You could, you know, you could be in a, playing in a schoolyard and cut yourself and somehow the virus gets into it. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have played more athletics and football than just about anybody else you can imagine. I was forever falling down, scraping myself, <laughs> you know, bleeding in one thing and another. And if anybody was a candidate to have, you know, a virus come through someplace, somewhere, you know, it would be me. How come I don't have it and she does? She says, well, I don't have an answer for that, you know. But, she said, 
interferon, which is the current physician's version of how you take care of this, its main function is to help the immune system. Am I correct? Yes. What it's supposed to do is amp it up, so to speak. So, so it really does its job so it can go get this, this um, virus, do away with it however it does it. It's gone now, and now we don't need interferon anymore or any of that because we can revert back to a normal life and we have conquered this little virus thing. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. That's what she was telling me. Okay. She also said to me, and I thought this was interesting, I'm going to pass it by you. Okay. She said, ask her, meaning you, uh, she, said, oh, she said, since the liver's function is to get out impurities of the system, mm -hmm. what is it that she thinks she's impure about? Interesting question. Now pay particular attention to this next reframe that I use, which I call a bee in the nose. Um, because, because what I'm trying to do here is to relate her past school experiences to what's her, her inability to concentrate at work. And I've been doing this and she's been going, yeah, okay, okay. I mean, she's been agreeing with me, uh, at least on an academic level. Um, I'm not convinced yet that she's really got it at a, at a gut level, so to speak, where it's really landed. So I want to take this reframe and, and use it and, and, and draw this parallel. Um, now, what happens here uh, near the end of this is you will see that this really lands with her. In fact, I've, I've, I've taken the video and I've kind of edited a little bit so it kind of zooms in on her face when she finally gets it and she goes, oh. uh, uh, like that, and that's important to understand. It's important for her to understand and for me to see, is, is, the, is the guy helping her, uh, to know that we're really making progress on this deeper level. She's really getting that the, the problems that she's, she's uh, facing aren't just related to something in her brain that, that can't be healed. Okay, let me give you, this is a parallel I've used before, but I, I, I want to use it, I want to use it here. Let's say we have two students that are equally bright and they have both studied for a test they're going to take and they know it cold, both of them, okay? And they sit down to take the test. The only difference is one of them has a B in their nose, going bzz, 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 okay? Which one is likely to um, complete the test better? The one without the bee. The one without the bee, right. Mm -hmm. Because the one with the bee in the nose, they're, I mean, they've got something, something is distracting them. Like, that bee could sting me at any moment. And like a, like a, right, okay? And so that would be, that would be very difficult, even though you're very bright, this, this student, mm -hmm. and you've studied and you know your stuff cold, but you've got a bee in your nose, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been through school in the, in the difficult way you've had, okay, with all the, as you say, fear, I mean, I, I've heard that, yes. okay, I mean, that's, that's no way to live several lives, or, I mean, several years in, in school, <laughs> formative years, and now you're in amount, what amounts to a classroom, it's not called a classroom, mm -hmm. but, but you have assignments like you do in classroom and so right. on, do you not have a bee in your nose? I do. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what it would seem to me. Yeah. And, so, and, so, and so this, this represents, God, I better do it right, or whatever that, I mean, I made that up. I don't know what your self-talk is, but, but if all of that is there, all those shoulds are there just like they are in school, you have a bee in your nose, and that contributes to your inability to focus and so on. I see. I get it.